Okay, so we started by um, looking at the problem of classifying cancer types based on gene expression profiles. Uh, right now, there is an explosion of data, obviously, in biological sciences, and especially in terms of gene expression. Um, we have profiles for patient populations that look at a large number of genes and their expression levels that might vary based on different classes in the population. This ends up being a large P small n problem, the curse of dimensionality, because we're looking at a feature space that might be like on the order of 20,000, but typically we only have maybe 50 or 100 patient samples. So, uh, and also we care a lot about being very, very accurate because we're doing diagnostics. So for example, false negatives are really, really bad. Um, so the first thing we did just to try to get baselines was we looked at the online, uh, there's an online synapse database of lots and lots of microarray samples for gene expression. And we went through the first 31 different types of cancer and we just did classifications. These are for different organs. Um, and we found that it was trivial to distinguish between them. Our baselines, this is just a, like a sample showing what, what we were getting with just using Perceptron. This was one nearest neighbor, Naive Bayes. Um, and in general, our mean performance was above 95% accuracy without doing anything, without doing feature selection, without trying to apply any specialized techniques at all. So we decided this wasn't an interesting problem. It also isn't very interesting because typically a pathologist doesn't have a hard time distinguishing between these types of cancer. Like, they're not usually confused about whether someone has breast cancer or lung cancer or something. That's trivial to tell. So instead, we moved on to the problem of classifying subtypes of a given cancer. This is difficult. This is a difficult problem. Um, and it's really critical to treatment, providing effective treatment, because the subtypes are usually defined based on how they respond to different therapies, um, presumably because they are, they're different on some molecular level and some, in terms of the gene expression. That's where the distinction lies. But this is difficult for a human to tell, actually. This classification uh, usually requires a pathologist with a lot of training, lots of experience. And even then, we find that there aren't even very very consistent across pathologists in terms of how they classify these subtypes. So in fact, we could in principle improve upon what is currently the medical practice if we found a good way of distinguishing between cancer subtypes based on the gene expression profiles. Um, so state of the art, in looking at this subtype problem, Initial, initial approaches didn't use machine learning really at all. They identified subsets of genes that they considered like good indicators of specific subtypes. The PAM50 set of genes, it's 50 genes, um, is the current gold standard for subtype classification, but it was sort of developed based on heuristics from doctors. It wasn't really based on statistical methods. And uh, then in 2004, we found a publication uh, using SVMs for subtype class classification in breast cancer, actually they, their methodology was very bad. They had very poor accuracy and then uh, sort of it looks like fudged their data to, to improve. And then we're using the 2014 list at all paper as the state of the art. They're using random forests and the PAM50 data set to get their best accuracy. Okay, so the first thing we did was got baselines without using feature selection. We included just the very vanilla, like basic classifiers, SVM with the RBF kernel. We tried some different kernels and found that the RBF worked best. And we also tried using exemplar SVMs because uh, we, from reading the literature, it seemed like they worked well when the, the feature space was higher, larger than the number of samples. Just as a, the, the picture sort of summarizes what they do, you have an ensemble of SVMs uh, and they classify each, like the exemplar of the this to class uh, as the single positive sample and everything else as the negative sample. Um, but we actually found that they didn't perform very well, so they, they didn't outperform the SVM with an RBF kernel. So next we did feature selection. We used the PAM50 data set, or the PAM50 set of genes. We also did PCA, and then we used significance analysis of microarrays to obtain something that we thought might outperform PAM50 because it's based on a statistical analysis. Basically, uh, this is based on a, like a methodological paper published in 2001. Um, you try to identify differentially expressed genes uh, based on permuting the labels, seeing what your like, baseline, uh, uh, like the, the significance based on um, what you would get from random chance. So you permute, permute the labels, see what you would calculate as significant, and then rescale what the significance is um, based on what you got from random permutations. So we used each of those. Uh, here you can see our results from using PCA, just the first 50 uh, principal components, PAM50, and then the hun first 100 genes that we identified as significant using s s uh, the SAM statistical technique. And this is the performance for each of our classifiers. And we got a really, really good result using our 
statistically selected subset of the genes in the SVMRBF kernel, 0.069. Um, so now this is the slide comparing the state of the art, which is the, this side from that 2014 paper and our performance. And basically we're, we're looking at, um, so we calculated a bootstrap uh, 0.632 error and compared with theirs. And in each of the categories, we're, we're comparable to their gene expression class error. And in the PAM50, their PAM50 versus our SAM100, we are beating them in one class and then either the same or very, very close to theirs. So right now our goal is to try to improve upon what we've done and beat them and sort of validate this methodology that we used for selecting these subset of genes as the features that are relevant. So our conclusion is that the SVMRBF kernel with the SAM feature subset is competitive with the state of the art and we think that in the next week we'll be able to beat it. Um, and that we also have generated a statistically based subset of genes that are significant better than the PAM50 set, which is based on a heuristic. And then we also evaluated a variety of classifiers. Hopefully we'll identify which one is the best for addressing this subtype problem. And these are our references.